Hey guys, this is Michael Myers 101, and this is my Halloween Kill spoiler filled review. Now, if you haven't seen the movie yet, uh, I do have a spoiler free review uh, that you can check out by clicking the card above. Uh, so, this is your spoiler warning for this video. Uh, if you don't want spoilers, turn the video off now. Because uh, I'm going to be talking you know, in full detail of uh, what I thought about the movie, uh, all the spoiler details here. So I'm going to get right into it. Uh, something that uh, I really liked about this movie I touched on in uh, the spoiler free review. I liked how it uh, took place on the same night, uh, Halloween 2 style. Uh, you can kind of see uh, the effects um, that these events have. Uh, on you know on the town uh, kind of see how things are getting you know crazier and crazier in the town as the night goes on uh, you know something that was only done uh, previously in the series and the original Halloween and Halloween 2 uh, so I liked how they kind of went back to that uh, style uh, with this movie uh, also you know I love that twist of uh, Hawkins uh, surviving you know, he was a character that uh, I really liked in Halloween 2018 and you know I was really sad they uh, killed him off uh, so it was cool to see uh, See him come back and kind of see things from a different point of view. Seeing how you know Cameron was uh, you know kind of leaving that dance after the you know cheating on uh, Allison with that you know making out with that other girl. Uh, kind of seeing him you know seeing his perspective and seeing how he ended up finding uh, Hawkins you know on the ground there uh, you know after being uh, you know seriously injured by uh, Doctor Sartain. Everyone thought that he had actually been killed, but uh, he ended up surviving. Uh, with uh, Cameron helping him out, uh, trying to stabilize him, and then uh, calling the ambulance. And uh, also, like I mentioned uh, in my spoiler-free review, uh, I really like the flashbacks. Uh, they gave more depth uh, to the Hawkins character and kind of fleshed out a lot of things that were kind of quickly uh, touched on in Halloween 2018. They kind of made you wonder, you know, like, how did that happen? Uh, like, how did Michael get captured? You know, since we didn't uh, see that happen in the original timeline, the original timeline he just escaped, uh, you know, kind of like it looks like he escaped at the end of the original Halloween. You know, Dr. Loomis is looking around, he's like nowhere around. So you're wondering, like, you know, how did he get captured? Uh, I also liked uh, the callback they did um, where Michael's kind of, you know, standing in front of the Myers house surrounded by the police and everyone kind of freezes and the camera zooms out. Uh, just like when Michael's parents catch him after he kills Judith in the original film. Uh, I thought the character development with Hawkins was really cool too, uh, seeing how he accidentally killed another police officer and how that really affected him and made him not want to see you know, more people killed. Uh, I think that's kind of why he wanted to you know stop Loomis from killing Michael, uh, and that's you know something that another thing that kind of was you know really quickly mentioned in Halloween 2018 uh, by Dr. Sartain saying that you know, he was the first deputy on the scene and he stopped Loomis from killing Michael. And it was something that I remember I was really interested to, you know, learn more about when I had heard that in the 2018 film. So I'm glad they kind of explained that further in this one. Uh, I think the bar scene uh, was also another uh, a cool perspective on what was going on uh, that night with uh, Tommy giving a speech and mentioning Lori. Uh, and then it kind of cuts to her as she's being, you know, taken away from uh, her house in the back of the truck uh, from the end of the previous movie. I also liked how uh, the mob forms uh, from the bar, uh, kind of similar to Halloween 4. It's what it kind of made me think of. I thought that was a you know kind of a cool callback to one of my favorite films in the series. Uh, the kills in this movie were uh, another strong point. Uh, Michael is absolutely brutal here. Um, you know, if that's what you're looking for, you're not going to be disappointed. The, the kills are extremely violent. He's going all out here. Uh, you know, extremely, extremely, you know, brutal, vicious kills. Uh, I also liked how they didn't, you know, kind of gloss over uh, Ray's death uh, from the first movie. Uh, I remember in the first movie, it, it almost seemed like they, you know, they didn't even really care um, uh, when he had died. But I guess, you know, at that point, they were really, they were in survival mode. You know, they were just doing whatever they could to stay alive. And then when things, you know, finally quiet down for a second, they have to deal with, um, you know, deal with that, you know, the... You know, their husband, their father uh, passed away. It was killed by Michael. Uh, so I, you know, I was glad they kind of, you know, took some time to uh, address that. Didn't just kind of like ignore it, you know, because it seemed like it was kind of ignored in the previous movie. But that does make sense. Uh, one thing I wasn't a fan of was some of the dialogue. Uh, like the uh, older couple that, you know, gets killed by Michael and uh, the couple that lives in the Myers house. Uh, I thought like some of their lines were just really weird, uh, kind of... Uh, unrealistic. 
Uh, like the old guy's like, you know, there, there's a guy in a monster mask in here, and the old lady's like, you know, what does he want? And the old guy's like, uh, who gives a shit? And, you know, I just like feel like it, uh, people wouldn't react that way. They'd be more scared and just kind of running away, basically. Um, you know, the same, kind of the couple in the Myers house just like had a bunch of like kind of really annoying, repetitive dialogue. They keep saying like, Big John, Little John, Big John, Little John, like over and over and over again. And then like one of them's like, I got this knife. And the other one's like, I got this knife. Just, I don't know, it was just really cheesy and, uh, you know, just really repetitive and weird. And then when, like, Michael kills uh, one of the Johns and the, the other John comes in, and he's it's like, Michael, you've come home. I just, like, thought it was so weird, like, uh, they'd be saying that. I don't know why he'd be, like, wouldn't be just, like, running away or, uh, you know, it just didn't seem realistic. And also, like, some of the slogans that a bunch of the people just keep repeating over and over just, like, got kind of ridiculous. They're just like, you know, evil dies tonight, evil dies tonight. Like, over and over and over, like, all these different characters saying it. Uh, just, yeah, I just thought it kind of got over the top. I also, uh, I like the idea of uh, including, you know, the other prisoner that escaped. Uh, I know, like, some people didn't like that, but uh, I thought it was cool because it seemed to be a plot point that never really went anywhere in Halloween 2018. Like, uh, in that movie, the sheriff is like, you know, Michael Myers is loose with a bunch of nutbags on Halloween night, and we're going to have a circus on our hands. Uh, but you never actually see any of the other prisoners after that point in the film. And, uh, you know, I wish they would have shown uh, more of them, actually, in this uh, film. Uh, you know, and, and maybe had them uh, actually, like, cause some, you know, actual trouble around the town to kind of add to the chaos. Uh, so I like the idea, but I just didn't like the way it was actually executed uh, with the hospital scene that a lot of people had problems with. I liked how they showed more of uh, some of the kids who were out trick-or-treating as well and, uh, you know, playing pranks on Big John and Little John. It kind of gave me some vibes like the film Trick or Treat. Uh, so I thought it was uh, cool, and you know I think they could have showed even a little more of that to kind of give you more of that Halloween feel. And uh, like I mentioned in my previous video, I wasn't a fan of uh, how they used a lot of the returning characters. And I felt like Marion, Lindsay, Lonnie, and Brackett like, didn't really do much to affect the storyline. Uh, it's like they were uh, just there to make the fans happy. And as a fan, I was really happy to see them again. And you know, I thought it was awesome that they actually got uh, many of the original actors back after all these years uh, since the original film uh, took place. Uh, but I just felt like they kind of wasted those characters. And I think uh, Tommy was uh, the exception, though, because he actually plays a major part in the story by basically forming the citywide mob to hunt down Michael. Uh, you've heard me quote the legendary Mr. Black uh, in a lot of my videos. And he had a great line uh, that I think is applicable here when he said that every character in the movie should be essential to the movie and the story. Uh, now, Mr. Black was talking more about token characters when he said that, but I think that uh, fits this situation as well. And at the end of the day, I, I, I'm glad those characters came back, but I wish they would have uh, had more of an effect on the direction of the story. Now, of course, uh, the music is amazing, uh, with John Carpenter, Cody Carpenter, and Daniel Davies returning to create the score. Uh, they've you know done it again. They did a great job, just like with Halloween 2018, and I think everyone's basically agrees on that. Uh, Michael's mask looks amazing, of course. Uh, I had already bought one from Trick or Treat Studios because you know I knew I wanted to wear it uh, on Halloween this year, and you can see my uh, unboxing video up above in the card. I also loved uh, you know, the opening credits of this movie, uh, the music, uh, you know, this uh, rendition of you know, the classic Halloween theme, and of course all the flaming pumpkins, and you know, the final pumpkin kind of you know, being burned apart and seeing all the, kind of the liquid dripping down it and everything. I thought it was just all really great, and I thought it really fit that theme of fire that you see in all the posters and in you know, Michael's burned mask uh, for this movie. Uh, I just uh, really, I felt it, like, it all tied together really well. So overall, uh, there were some things I would have changed, especially with the dialogue and the use of some of the characters that, that were returning from the previous films. Uh, but other than that, uh, I really enjoyed the movie. I'm definitely uh, going to be purchasing it when it comes out. And I'm um, definitely, I'm still excited for Halloween Ends. You know, this didn't you know, make me not want to see that movie or anything like that. You know, I definitely, I'm, you know, still so excited to check it out and see how the story ends up getting resolved. So now, uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, did you like the movie? Did you not like it? Uh, which things did you like or not like? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.